Okay, so we've got a decent crowd here already, and hopefully more people will trickle in. So we'll let's get started. And I'm going to go very quickly and drop some invites over in a couple of other channels. And we'll be right back for the, uh, the opening of the show. So if you would like to present, go ahead and drop that emoji in the chat, and Petra will, will uh, see to that. Okay, so it is just after the top of the hour. My name is Ethan D. Smith, and this, once again, is Talk of the Line, a weekly voice chat curation segment brought to you by the Steam Engine Group on Steamit.com, where we meet with our members here in voice chat and talk about what they've been up to this week. This show is broadcast live across Twitch and YouTube and several other mediums, via the Steam Star Radio Network, and we are very thankful to Sir Cork and his witness that he runs with Rhonda Kay for allowing us to have this time slot every week. Normally, this is co-hosted by Awaken to Life, but this week he had to step away for the evening. He might show up later, but in his place today, we have the very lovely Petra, and I'm going to let her say hello. Hi there, all you lovely people. It is a pleasure to be with you again. One of my favorite people in the whole wide world is busy chasing around tourist ladies and can be here tonight. So I stepped in and will be your co-host. Uh, I am excited to see what all of you have been up to. So this is going to be such a fun evening and let's get it started. You can drop your links whenever you're ready to share. And either me or Ethan will be reminding you of those links. Yes, indeed. And so I wanted to just give a quick intro for those of you who may be listening or have not participated. I think most of the people in here have participated before. But the way this works is that Petra keeps up with a list of who would like to present, and we just go down the list, and you can just tell us all about what you've been up to, your latest post, someone else's post that you really like, or just tell us what's on your mind. And uh, this week, we do indeed have the full 90 minutes on the schedule. Last week, I had something else come up at a quarter or half past the, the second hour, and but this week, I have moved that back, so we're good to go. And I also want to make mention right up front that yes indeed we have another giveaway going on this week and as much as Petra probably doesn't want me to mention it the giveaway can be found in the TOTL giveaways channel if you would like to enter you can head over to that channel and you'll see how to enter the prize this week is again a 50% upvote from my personal account on the post of your choice that can be on anything and um but if you don't specify, I'll just do it on your latest blog post. So uh, thank you for the gift there, Petra. That's very appropriate. And That's, that's supposed to be you. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Well, I don't giving have... Away, giving away your votes. Well, I definitely don't have that fabulous of a mustache, nor will I ever because I just can't grow one at all. But I will just imagine for a moment that I also have dark hair. Anyway, thank you for that. It's great. Yeah, and I will not be participating in this giveaway, so all you guys have a bigger chances of winning. Well then, so, well, isn't that more of a, what do you call that, an ascot, like Fred wears on Scooby-Doo? Like, he's got it tied around his neck rather than he's wearing it. <laughs> I don't know if I have anything yeah, it is. quite that fabulous. I, um... If I did, I would have to put myself on video over on the stream so everybody can come could come watch it because that would be pretty impressive. But I have no immediate plans to do that. I, I don't know how crazy BG does it on his show, sits in front of the camera for an hour. It's one thing to be in front of the mic, but I don't know about the camera. <laughs> 
I'm looking at a GIF and listening to you talk and imagining that you really look like this. I know you don't, but it's funny to imagine. <laughs> I like this. I really like this mustache. Okay, well, that's good. Okay, well, thank you for that. All right, well, we will just go ahead and get started and see where things go. And um, I don't think we really have anything to talk about as far as the, the group goes, any announcements or anything. I think things are are just about as usual. I've been pretty busy myself outside of Steemit, as many of you are. And so I haven't had a whole lot of time to do things, but it was a great pleasure to go sift through the baggage car post-promotion channel today and see what's been going on. Um, and also to catch up on what's been going on with some other projects by many of our members. So I'm sure we'll hear about some of those today. Okay, well. Uh, yeah, we will hear about those for sure. Definitely. Okay, so we've got about 10 people in the channel here. So who's up first there, Petra? Well, the first one is an amazing lady who does so much for the platform. And we all love to love her. So Dreams Team, you're up. Hello, everybody. Um, okay, so I will let you guys choose. Should I talk about Dream Team's account or Welcome Wagon account first? Let's go with your personal account and hopefully by the time we get going. Yeah, we do want both, I think. That's a good thing. But uh, we'll, we'll let you talk <laughs> okay. about the Welcome Wagon a little bit later in the broadcast when hopefully we have a little bit more little more people around to hear about it because I think there's a lot of cool stuff. That is a really good idea, Ethan. That's that's why you run this show. <laughs> okay. So if you'll Here give me just a moment, let me address, you go, you can go ahead and drop your link. I just want to address uh, Blue Hearted, who seems to be new to the channel. I just wanted to, Blue Hearted, remind you, the show is called Talk of the Line, and um, we have a group here called the Steam Engine, and it's all about like, increasing engagement with among our members and appreciating undervalued content. And so every week we get on Discord voice chat here and give our members an opportunity to talk about their latest post. And so you'll get a flavor of that right now as Dream Steam tells us about this one. Oh, um, this is so appropriate because I believe last week um, I had put the original post up here and debuted it. I'm pretty sure that I debuted it on Talk of the Line. Um, and so many answers came in. So the original post was basically asking people, could we please, 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 please talk about the voting bots and not get hyper? <laughs> and I joked about how I was putting on my armor and typing with one hand and putting my armor on with the other. And I was so pleasantly pleased with how absolutely open and generous with um, comments and level-headed people. There was not a bit of anger or disruption or anything in the comments. And I think it's probably, um, probably has the record <laughs> longest um, comment section of all of my posts ever. So it was really helpful. And comments kept coming in all throughout the week and I kept responding to them and um, it was funny because if you go through the comment section you can see how I just kind of my perspective keeps changing a little bit each day. So this particular post was just kind of the wrap up coming back and telling everybody thank you so much for their kindness and for their willingness to discuss it. And now I'm pretty much 99.99999% convinced that if you use um, in a really ethical way, and there are some really cool ethical voting bot thingies out there, you can do a lot of good for the platform. Um, when they're abused, they do damage, but when they are used properly, um, <clears throat> they can do some really cool things. And people were even talking about, um, you know, giving away once they use voting bots, how they can use their SPD that they get to um, to bless other people. And I even made a suggestion that I have been the recipient of some secret voting bots that I didn't know until later. Um, and that was such an encouragement to me. Um, 
it's just every once in a while to get that. It's like a mini Curie, you know? And um, so I personally am looking forward to now learning how to use it and going around and sneakily giving little, little people, um, maybe with them knowing, maybe without them knowing, I don't know. Instead of getting curied, I guess they'll look forward to getting dreamied. <laughs> but I'm super excited to try it. And um, this week is my experiment week. And Petra told me that she's been using Minnow Booster, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I want to try Smart Steam because that's the one that I've been hearing about. So we're going to try to do a little experiment and see which one has some advantages, disadvantages, and, and look to see which is the best. So um, this was a really cool post to do just to kind of celebrate how Steamians can have positive conversations without without freaking out. <laughs> so in the end. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was reading, um, I read both of your posts on the bots and the first one, it also surprised me with the amount of comments you got and the quality of comments because some of those comments, uh, maybe mine too, but never mind, uh, some of those comments were really long and like posts, like posts in their length and people had great opinions and thoughts about the topic and the conversation started and I'm glad to see that people communicating without being angry at each other so this is a great great improvement good job on achieving that thank you i'm not sure how i did but maybe the joke about the armor i don't know but it worked well and it was really really cool I yeah and just uh the thing you mentioned about uh using bots for other people's posts just be careful there to use them in the right way because I have seen people um, get downvoted and flagged uh, by you know who, <laughs> and they say that they didn't use bots and did not someone else use them on their posts. So please be careful when you use bots for other people's posts, not to get them in trouble by doing so. Yeah, there's there's a kind of a lot to consider. We've just, I mean, brought up a, a bunch of great things that are it's relevant to all of us and. Just to immediately respond to yes, so that's what I was going to say. Do the make sure that you look at the bots and try to keep the make sure that the post you're sending a vote for is under three and a half days old. That's the main thing that will avoid you getting flagged by our good friend Grumpy Cat. So what I wanted to also mention was that Dream Steam, I think part of the reason that you got such good engagement on this is likely because of the people that you surround yourself with. It's really great when you can share these types of posts in an environment like this on this show or in other some of the other groups that I know you're involved in. And I mean, we know most of the people around there. Nobody's going to get on there and troll. They're, they, everybody's interested in having a decent and civilized conversation. So it's really good to see that happen, especially in the comments of a post, and I'm really glad that you took the time to share it. I personally have not gone to read those yet, but I will definitely make time because it's it's good to hear that some things are happening, that discourse is occurring without discord, and yeah, anyway, thanks so much for sharing that, and I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. I also really like the fact that you took the curied thing and made it your name. So I, you heard it here first, folks. Um, <laughs> if you get dreamied, you'll know what happened. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, I like that. If you get dreamied. It's not just dreamed. It's dreamied. So yeah. there you go. You never know what might happen. So always be on the lookout. Oh yeah, keep a look, keep a lookout for dream and your possibility to get dreamy. Yes, indeed. Okay, well, thank you again for sharing that dream steam. I'm sure that will allow you to come back on here later in the program to talk about some other things that you've been going got been ugh, wow that you have going on. So. 
if I can speak correctly. Okay, looks like Crazy BG's just popped in the room, so good to see him here today. And um, all right, Petra, who else? Well, next is Maverick Invictus. So if you are ready, we are ready for you too. Yeah, I'm ready. Just uh, give me a sec. Yeah, no problem. Right. So what I'm going to talk to, to you about is actually not a post of my own, but a new project that I've started. So this is a uh, charity uh, post that I've that I'm going to do, uh, which is the Gift in Kind uh, Philippines. So what we do is we provide uh, school supplies for indigenous children in uh, in one of the provinces that uh, we have here, and we've been doing it for the past eleven years. So this would be our twelfth year of operation. So I've been pretty bu busy um, doing this. So uh, Dreams Team, I'm sorry if I, I'm not uh, often chatting in a welcome wagon, but <laughs> uh, this is what I've been doing. We've been uh, collecting funds, doing fundraisers, and uh, this is our chance to do it in Steemit as well. So that's my post here. That's really cool, Maverick. So this being the 12th year, could you tell us about, a little bit about how that got started 12 years ago? Because it seems like that's really great that it's been going on for so long. Yeah, um, we've. Uh, it started when we were all just uh, office mates um, in, in one call center in, in, in Manila, where in, we were all just um, entry-level uh, people. So we didn't have like huge salaries or anything, but we just wanted to make a difference. And uh, one of the things that uh, that our founder, our chairperson wanted to do was uh, help less fortunate children. And so that's how we started. Um, we just collected some funds from our salary, uh, made donations and, uh, and our first school that uh, we, um, we did, we uh, supported about 50 children. And it was just a couple of notebooks, a couple of, uh, of uh, pencils, but you know, the, the smiles that, that uh, we uh, received from them was just priceless. And so every year we've been doing this, we've been um, collecting funds from friends, from family. Um, and about three years ago, we were able to finally get uh, a company to add us to their corporate social responsibility program. So we're getting some funds from there. That's that's really great to hear. I know there are a lot of, clearly there are a lot of charity efforts, but uh, things like that that involve getting, especially education supplies to people like that, really have a special place for me personally. My wife is an educator and so it's always good to see things like that going on. And especially now that you have the, the blockchain here on Steemit to help raise some funds for those. And a while back, I actually did something similar. Uh, my wife needed some things for her classroom, and we raised some funds on using a post on here. And it was really great to see the outcome. So it's a really good way to get that people can help support your cause you know, without having to go through all kinds of red tape or anything like that. And so, yeah, that's great. Great to hear. Yeah, I, I, I know, Ethan. And, and that's the thing that I like about the Steam blockchain because everything is going to be transparent. So you'll be able to see where your votes went, uh, where the money will be, uh, and we will be very transparent on where uh, the money will be um, used. So everything is going back to the in indigenous uh, children. And uh, some of the funds that we will be getting also, we would want to power up our account so that we can grow the account and help other charity organizations here in, uh, in Steemit. That's, that's really great. Does anybody else have any questions for Maverick about this, about the new charity effort?
Um, I do. So do you, um, so you raise the money and then do you buy it there or do you purchase things here and then bring it over? How, how are we going to be a part of this? That's what I want to know. <laughs> okay. Well, easiest way would be to just upload the, the post. And uh, if you want to send uh, donations, uh, you can send it to that account. And uh, from the account, um, what we'll do is um, I will I will be the one that will get the, the funds and then we buy all of the school supplies locally here. We have uh, some companies that give us uh, discounts. So since we've been doing it for the past uh, 11 years and um, everything will be published, we uh, provide uh, all of our donators with our financial um, statement of uh, where the money went to and and um, how many uh, recipients uh, um, we helped out. So everything is very transparent. We really don't like uh, um, red tape or any of, of the problems um, plaguing some of the larger charities. What we are really trying to do here is just to make sure that the kids have a, a better opportunity for their lives. That is a great project and you and people who you are working with are so nice to be doing something like this. Thank you so much, Petra. Is this the first time that you have used the Steam blockchain to try to raise funds for your charity? Uh, yeah, th this is, well, I've been posting about some of the things that we've been doing uh, since last year and all of those funds, I've collected them and, and gave it to the, to the charity organization. But um, we've created a um, separate account because what our plan is in a couple of years, uh, we want the, the kids that graduated from uh, the in indigenous tribe to take hold of it and, and so that they will be able to make use of it in sourcing for their own funds. So, um, but this is our first time doing it on the, on the blockchain and even sourcing it really out aside from the donations that we've been getting from members and some of the companies that we work with. That's great. I know that sometimes with all of the scamming and who knows what that goes on in the platform, it's really difficult to know, you know, how can I be sure that the, the money is going where it says it is. But all it takes is for you to just make, you know, a few donations, small things, and document everything and put it up because that's going to start to build trust. I mean, I look at what you are Hope is doing that with Sir Quirk's charity that he started all the things that they're doing around the globe now and it all started with something very small just like this so right right I, I've, I've talked to uh, Sir Cork about this and you know he, he kind of balked at the amount that was needed but I, I told him of course that the entire amount is not we're not asking that from from you or hope but you know just just some uh, help in in getting the word out that that's the only thing that we need and, and hopefully some of the kinder people will be able to see what we're trying to achieve here. I, I think so, definitely. Of course, Sir Cork does get unsolicited messages asking him for <laughs> hundreds of dollars all the time. So <laughs> uh, I think he just automatically adopts a, um, a, a kind of skepticism when it comes to things. But it's really good that you, if you can get things off the ground by yourself and and give them a direction that hopefully you can find some more organizations that will help support what you're doing. Right. Thanks, Ethan. <laughs> Thank you, Maverick, for sharing that. And so just a moment, we'll pause here for the station identification. Once again, this is Talk of the Line, a weekly voice chat curation segment hosted on Discord by the Steam Engine, which is a group on steamit.com dedicated to curating our members' posts and in promoting engagement among them. This show is one way we do that, where we invite our members on to talk about what they've been up to this week. My name is Ethan D. Smith, and I'm here with my co-host Petra today, and we are just heading down the tracks to some more great posts. So what we've got going on is we've heard from Dreamsteam, we've heard from Maverick, 
Who's up next? Well, we will be chugging along to Crazy BG Adventure. Crazy BG. What have you got Are for you us ready? today? I am. Well, we'll go right ahead. Oh, no, I'm not. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, make up your mind. You got to be ready. ready or not? If you say you're ready, you've got to be ready. But, but no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, but you've got to be ready. <laughs> I thought I had copied the right thing, but it seemed that I hadn't. And I was just going to post up a load of nonsensical stuff. Well, I'll take a moment in the meantime to remind all of our members of the Steam Engine, if you're here today, that you can head over to TOTL Giveaways to enter a giveaway and a chance to win a vote from me. All right. Okay. Um... So this post that I I did a um, a write up about um, a couple of days ago is entitled "Our YouTube Bloggers Lo- Losing Viewers: The Case of Buddy Maya," um, who's also known as somebody called Graveyard Girl. Um, and the reason I wanted to post it up is because <clears throat> well before the time of Steam, I've followed vloggers on YouTube for quite a long time. And Graveyard Girl was probably one of the first ones that I used to follow because she had a an interest in um, the paranormal. Um, however, I kind of watched her videos, but I didn't watch a lot of them because she she went against them um, for the paranormal and kind of went into beauty and makeup um, and and things like that. But there were two two sets of videos that she loved to do, which was. Um, uh one was called follow me around where you would you would see her go into a, like some sort of store in america and she was so funny that you would like reviewing products and the other one was called does this thing really work where she would do like tv shows not tv shows but products that are seen on tv and um, that are advertised and she would buy them and test them out and were really good and she went up right up until 2014 was her penultimate. So she worked hard for four years. 2014 was her penultimate time where um, she had like, you know, eight, uh, four million subscribers at the time. And um, she was doing really well. And obviously after that, it climbed and climbed and climbed. She hit eight million viewers, but then she was going from like a million views in one video right down to like 250,000. So all of a sudden things dropped and she didn't know what to do. So she, she needed help. And, um, I, she was helped by another guy called Shane Dawson, who's another vlogger. And it was really interesting to see. And the reason why I've wrote this um, as well, by the way, because I don't really want to tell you guys the whole story. You know, you can read it for yourself is that I think that, which I've noticed this a lot with a lot of vloggers and a lot of content creators, is there's this kind of a shift going on where content creators on other platforms are running out of content. They're running out of things to do. So they're desperately clambering on to things that they can try and do videos about in the hope of getting views, which they're losing people, you know, on a on a very large number. Um what when you see like some of the statistics, it is alarming. And um it just got me wondering about, you know, um I, I kind of wrote a paragraph just to say that when you're writing content to try and stay true, so if something's do something's working, don't change it. Don't fix fix something that's not already broken, because it can really damage the the what you bring to the platform. And the case study that I've used is an excellent example of that as well. So hopefully that you'll enjoy the write up. And um, if you've got any questions, feel free to let me know. So I think a lot of this and just this discussion in general has to do with what motivates people to watch content creators in the first place. So I'm curious, Crazy BG, you said that you were really into the the vlogging. Um, How did you get started watching those kinds of things? Um, 
when because you well YouTube's about what 12 years old now so <clears throat> graveyard girl came around in 2010 so YouTube had been around for a, a, a couple of um a couple of years and, and it, literally how I stumbled upon vlogging is I don't I can't actually remember the first vlogging video that I watched I think it was kind of I might have seen videos about content and the vlogging was evolve an evolvement of the content that I had watched. So I think it's more a case of people were putting things out there for people to watch. But the vlogging then came at a later part. And I that's how I discovered vlogging. And because blogging was already out there anyway, so vlogging was like the new blog. It was a visual aid. Um, and that's how I personally seen it. Now, when I first came onto this platform, that's what I wanted to do. It's not something that I do now. But even though it's something that I don't do, there's still people out there, regardless of whether it be YouTube, Day Live, YouTube, or whatever, who are very, very good at this kind of content. Um, and it's it's amazing to watch these people and what they do and how they do it, you know, and I get a lot of my content ideas as well, actually, from vloggers. So, yeah, it's um, it's really amazing. And um, so I can't give you an exact time, Ethan, but it's definitely something that I kind of picked up along the way. And yes, Darren Claxton, I am from the Northeast. That's really interesting to me. I know that whenever I've considered watching that those types of content vlogging and things, it's it's generally because they are doing something very novel or strange or interesting enough for me to warrant watching it. Because I, I know that there are a lot of people that just record themselves doing everyday things and yet still get thousands of views. And I, I, I guess from my perspective, I find it difficult to really think that's entertaining at all. But I um I can certainly respect that they have a following. So yeah, yeah you know, it's actually it's funny that you should say that because then I can't really recall. I think it's because Graveyard Girl gets the name Graveyard Girl because what she used to do was when she vlogged, she would vlog in a graveyard and she would she would examine the headstones of people who had been you know, who have been passed over for more than 100 years and their graves are really forgotten about. And she has such a an alternative view on life to the majority of the of people. It just made her content really interesting to watch. And she was a, she was a loner. She really, really was. And, you know, there were so many unanswered questions which have just literally been answered recently. It was it was it was amazing to watch. She, she's, you know, apart from if you're into beauty and makeup, then no problem. But if you, you know, on a separate note, she, she has some really, really good content. She, she definitely, you know, you can learn a lot of people like uh, Graveyard Girl. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your perspective. I'm sure that if anyone wants to check out this discussion or add to the discussion, you can head over to Crazy BG's latest post. But yeah, thank you again for that and um i mean i think that you should head back to vlogging especially it involves making videos about chickens because those do you think you see some some people have said that and i wasn't sure whether i should do it <laughs> i mainly just wanted to get in a joke about that chicken video <laughs> but so i don't know if i'm serious or not i would have to evaluate the body of your work to make sure but um, I will. I'll let you know what I think. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. I'll bear that in mind. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Crazy, for presenting. It's really good to have a few people that have popped in here. We've got Sim Girl. We've got Shadows Pub. We've got Artemis North. Awaken to Life has joined us. Calamams here. We've got a party. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, Petra, who's up next? Yeah. Let's continue that party. And let's hit it off in a style. So before, um, actually, um, Awaken is next, but before he gets to promote his post, um, Ethan, would you be so kind and lovely and um, tell that thing to Awaken that you have to tell him? 
you know, that special yes. thing so, that you are, that you you are that doing. I can, I can hear that. Please tell me that I'm awesome, Ethan. We all know that you're awesome, honey, but um, Ethan has something really interesting to share. So Okay, I'm all ears. So last week, I never told you the reason why I could only do an hour-long show. And before we started the show, I told Petra, and she seems to think that I should tell you. So um, it is because I have, and a group of friends of mine, as well as my wife, have started playing basketball regularly on Tuesdays, and we were playing at 5.30 last week, so I had to leave early. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. That's a good way to get some exercise in, right? Yeah, so this week I got it. Unless you suck at it. I'll give you lessons, man. (laughs) Okay, well, so this week I got it moved to six, so we can do the the full show. So And and that's pretty much going to be the same, I think. It's all forgiven. It's all forgiven. Okay. Basketball, I forgive you, man. All right. Well, Petra, was that the reaction that you were anticipating, or did you have something else in mind? No, no, that was the thing that just needed to be said. So, because it's funny uh, to leave a professional basket player uh, and go play basketball and not tell him about it. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, we had we had a great time and I'm looking forward to it again today. It, it's been a while since I have played just for fun. So, anyway, thank you so much. And I well, think what we need, what we need next is the video of you playing. Then I can comment, you know. Oh boy. Yes. Remember, remember, Ethan, when I told you that he's going to be your biggest critique, right? Yes. Well, I played twice I last week. He could be your teacher. Well, I did hit the game winning shot last week in one of the games we played, so maybe maybe I have what it takes. Were you cherry picking, you know, the the, the ones where uh you don't go for a rebound, you just wait at a half court, then you wait for the pass for somebody else to rebound and pass it to you half court and you make the game winning layup? No, I had a pretty tough guy guarding me. It was it was a good matchup. So I had to I had to move around all the time and I came off a screen, caught the ball and shot it and it went in. I knew I knew you had some basketball talent in you. <laughs> well, anyway, it is your turn, so we'd love to hear from you since you broke your blogging silence recently. Hey, blog! Yeah, I blogged. I think two posts in eight days, something like that, or or two posts in twelve days. <laughs> I don't know. I just got home and I started working on my my bathroom renovations, and uh, I just didn't have time for nothing. So I'm I'm actually writing posts about that now. So this is the post I'm going to share. Give me a second. For those of you who don't know, Awaken to Life is normally my co-host on this program, but he's been doing some renovations lately since he's moved back from Italy to his home in Croatia and uh, has been and evidently got tied up with that today. So Petra is co-hosting with me today. So it's nice for Awaken <laughs> to Life to get a chance to present this week. You know, Ethan, what's funny? I actually didn't. I wasn't late because of that. I oh. actually was late also because of the basketball. I was oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, are you kidding? Well, I suppose that makes us even then. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, man. It was like uh, uh, they called me in the morning, and I forgot we had uh, talk of the line tonight. And I was like, okay, I'm coming. And then I couldn't, I couldn't say no because I was the sixth guy, so we can play three on three. Well, that's quite all right. All right. Well, tell us what you've been up to lately. Okay, there we go. Uh, in the picture, there's my brother, my father, and me in the middle. Uh, basically, after the season, I always, when I come back after the season, many of you know that, uh, I invest some money in rebuilding uh, our home in Croatia, which basically has not been rebuilt since, uh, since war. This wartime in Croatia, what, 20 something years ago. And um, basically, I come uh, home. My dad doesn't have a good enough pension so he can invest in a house. So, what I do is I save some money from my basketball season. And every year I come back, uh, we do some work on our house. Last year, we did a hallway, uh, hallway uh, when you enter the house and the hallway up the stairs. Uh, this year, we started uh, completely renovating our bathroom. And that means everything. We had to we had to take out the plumbing, the old plumbing. So I had to use the drill, 
Uh, it took hours and hours just to tear it down. And you know, I basically, I remember from the drill when you're breaking through the um, hard stone, I don't know, cement blocks. Basically what happens is, what happened is like I was been doing it all day. When I was going to sleep, my, my arms were basically shaking all night because I'm not used to, I'm not used to working with, that, with tools, you know. I work, I work with basketball, I work with basketball, you know. So basically uh, the, this is the first day and I showed you how it, the bathroom is looking right now and. We, we lost, lost you. Yeah, we lost him. Come back, we can. We have lost you. Well, I suppose he might need to drop out of drop out of voice and come back in because he's. Oh, is that what's going on, Dream Steam? He's he's going to tell his brother that that Petra thinks he's cute. That's really funny. <laughs> Well, I don't know what to fill the air with here other than it's really funny that last week I had to leave early for basketball and this week he was late because of basketball. So That is called karma. I suppose so. There is an excellent example of karma, actually. <laughs> so Dream Team, how do you know this about... Are, are you... Is this like the truth? Are you are you making this up? Or yeah, you... yeah, yeah, it's the no, truth. It's really uh, the truth. He just did a post about uh, oh. going back home and meeting his brother's um, wife, and then he had a picture of sitting next to her, and she was so tall. <laughs> okay, she was she's as tall cute. as he was, and she's cute too. Check out his post. She's cute too. Okay, I'm there right. he is. I don't know what you, what you guys heard last. I don't know where it broke up my internet. Well, we heard you saying hello, guys. <laughs> that was it? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. I was talking to myself for six minutes. Hello. Shadow, be quiet. Uh, <laughs> Oh, okay, uh, okay I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you like a shortcut of what I said. <laughs> I'm just kidding, honey. Go right ahead. We lost you in maybe your last sentence or so. Okay, okay. You're mean, Petra. You know that. Where did you Where did you learn that from? I don't know. I don't know. Who I've learned. That. I've learned from the best. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You learned well. Well, thank you, my teacher. Now go on and continue promoting your post. So what was the exact thing you heard last? Um, I don't know. I was busy telling people that your brother was cute. So <laughs> someone you, else will tell you. You yeah, were, actually, you my, were talk, uh, my friend, you were talking about how every... Uh, every year that you come home and that you meet up with your dad and your brother and that you mentioned last year you had been doing the work on the the passageway and um, you were about to start talking about the work that you're doing on the house this year. Okay, so basically we're doing the bathroom this year. We had to first day that you're going to see the post. Uh, we, tear, we, we I just showed you how it looks right now. I mean, it's a, it's a mess. <laughs> so basically, I decided this year that I'm going to invest money what I earned this year and invested to create a king's bathroom for my dad. So basically, the uh, next post that I'm going to write about uh, is going to be how I tore everything down. Basically, it was just me and dad, and we had to uh, dig out the old plumbing through the cement blocks. So I had to use the drill, which was <laughs> which is very shaky. And I'm not used to working with tools like that. So basically, the night... the uh, after we finished work at night, my my hands were literally shaking. Like I have a, um, I don't know what's the call. I don't know the disease where your hands shake, Parkinson's, right? Parkinson's. Basically, my yeah, my arms were like shaking the whole time because I'm not used to you. Uh, you're actually gonna see the picture of me working with that. It's uh, it was funny and it took us a while to tear it all down because we had a. You can see that we have a big bathtub in the back. So we couldn't take it all out in one piece. It was impossible because uh, it's about 200 kilos or maybe 420 pounds weights. And it's only me and that, uh, me and that working. So we had to 
take the hammer and break it in pieces because it's made out of, out of uh, lead. And that was the that was the fun part of it, actually breaking stuff up. <laughs> and actually, the whole two days was just breaking stuff up. But the problem was carrying all that waste up like 100 meters up to the garbage disposal. I had to use two buckets, two plastic buckets, about 20, 30 kilos each in my two arms. And I had to carry it to the to the garbage about I don't know. I've carried about 1000 kilos. I, I, I'm not even kidding in one day. And it, it was exhausting. My legs were like, my legs were burning. Like, I don't know. I thought I had strong legs from basketball, but then I, <laughs> then I got into the construction work and I realized how weak I am. <laughs> it was actually pretty funny, but the next post you're going to see actually how we all tore it down, how everything went down. And then through there, we're going to, I'm going to take you through the whole renovation and everything. I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible. And that's basically it. I'm not going to tell you too much. You're going to see a lot of the posts. We are, let's say 70% finished, but there's still a lot of work to do. I have a question, a tiny little question, but still a question. Did someone take a picture of you while you were working? We would love to see those. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to share that in the next post. I have uh, I have actually a lot of pictures. My brother was taking pictures because my brother and me, my brother actually had a back surgery uh, recently, and he's still not supposed to be working anything, lifting anything, but he came to visit us, and we started on a side project, which you guys going to see, something that it's not stressful for his back or something like that, but he shouldn't have done anything, but I couldn't stop him. So he's just like that, you know. He He, he, he was like... I'm sorry, I can't help you on the bathroom. I was like, it's, it's okay, brother. We're going to do this alone. It's no problem. And then he came here and he started on a side project on something different. <laughs> he just couldn't, he couldn't stay on the side. So now all you have to do is add Awaken to Life to your Gina bot or tune back into this show next week and you'll learn all about it. You'll see proof of work. You'll see what the side project is. There's just so many things that we're going to leave you in suspense with today. Well, hold on, Petra, you still don't believe me that I actually worked? No, I would not say that. I would just like to see more pictures of you. Okay, okay. I don't know. That's kind of suspicious. A little bit. No, it's know. not. No, it's not. Okay, my bad. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. Yes, thank you. Thank Your you so much. Always lovely, always lovely to read. And... Uh, especially this one, <laughs> the renovation uh, of the house, and what? Shut up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually dying over here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, uh, are you telepathic? How are you reading my mind? Yeah, I really want to see you and gaze at oh, you. Boy. So please make a post and show us, show me and the rest of us your lovely pictures. Okay, shirt with no shirt. Oh boy. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, We're gonna. Go, I'm gonna just stop that right there. <laughs> We're gonna wait, wait, wait. we're gonna try to re retain some semblance of family friendliness here and move on to the next person. So, anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This this show is <laughs> so anyway. Let's look at let's think about what Dream Steam has just said. This could be potentially exciting. Most welcome, welcome to come to Croatia. You see and hear by listening to Awaken and I that it's always crazy and fun with us Croatians. So Croatians, so you are most welcome to join. Join mm. the fun. And where is Wax Science today? I'm going in September. Uh, That's awesome because Wax Science actually lives very close to me, Dream Steam. So I'm not gonna see you. I'm just not gonna come. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, he's full of it. He's going to come. And what sense is working? Uh, the season started, and since he is living at the seaside, they have a lot of work during the summer, so he's working, I think. Well, I think that's great, and could we'll just hang on, and hopefully we'll all be here next year, and we can hear all about it and see, and see the photos and 
a blog post about it. Maybe if Dream Steam ap- will appear in a photo because she's remaining remains anonymous. So I don't know. We may just have to hear about it. Anyway, let's go ahead and um, just remind everyone that this is Talk of the Line, which is a weekly voice chat curation segment hosted by the Steam Engine Group on Steamit.com. I'm Ethan D. Smith here with my co-host Petra, and we are walking through what's been going on with our members this week. And so we want to remind you that there are only about 10 minutes left for you to enter the giveaway over in the TOTL giveaways channel. If you are a member, a passenger on the Steam Engine, you may enter in that. And so head over and do that right now. And I'm going to head over to Petra and ask who's next. Okay, so I'm still kind of <laughs> recovering from the last thing we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, next is activist blog. So if you're ready, we are ready for you too. Please come on and share your post with us. Hey there, talk of the line. Good to have care you here there, today. Care there, activist. I appreciate um, all of the Croatian humor. I lived next to some Croatians for a while, and I just I love the culture and the beauty and everything you guys do is fantastic. I love the cooking and the coffee. And anyway, uh, this post is about um, my entry for for the deep dives. Uh, WikiLeaks contest. It's a new initiative to do uh, research on WikiLeaks so that we can post the information onto the blockchain. The idea is that by doing, ind- by encouraging independent uh, investigative journalism to be posted onto the blockchain, then this information becomes sensor proof. So it's, it's really a great concept. And um, this is my my first uh, entry into that. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, would you like to tell us something more about um, it in a couple of more words? I'm, see, I'm, looking, I'm going to your post now. And it does seem interesting. Sure. The post basically talks about how um, in the US we're using privatized intelligence gathering. So intelligence gathering for profit, which is a very bizarre thing. And um, because it's for profit, then it insulates um, both the corporation and the government from accountability because the corporation is doing what they're doing in the name of benefiting their shareholders. So they don't have to be accountable to the public. And um, basically by outsourcing um, intelligence gathering in this WikiLeak, it exposes that uh, torture was carried out um, in the name of profit. It's always interesting to see what comes out of of the things that WikiLeaks publishes and how quickly the different various states are to try to shove it under the rug. So I think it's a good idea to get the information out there so people can read everything and come to their own conclusions rather than accept things that they may hear now and then. So thank you again for sharing that with us. I think um, I think that's important and one of the great applications that the blockchain potentially has. Yeah, you know, um, the blockchain is a great place for storing information, um, assuming we keep keep voting for witnesses and keep the witnesses, uh, then that information will be preserved forever. Indeed. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show again this week, activists. It's great, great to have you here again. Okay, so... Once more, five more minutes to enter the giveaway if you've not done that, and that will end at the top of the hour here. So uh, what do we have now, Petra? Sorry, just needed to put that gif of you again. Oh, Uh, (laughs) that's not me, but anyway. Yes, it is. (laughs) So Ethan is giving away his lovely votes. And go to Talk of Giveaways and click if you haven't already. Okay, next is Dreams Team. 
so we will hear from her again. Dream Scene Part 2. Oh, yeah, Jane. go. Yeah, she wants to hear her again. You weren't even here to hear her the first time. I know. <laughs> okay, now I have Touché. Ron Lincoln. Hold on. Oh my gosh, what did I do with the link? Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lost in space. It could be. It's That's gone. Okay. We will just Your link that. went to Croatia for vacation. Yeah, there it she is. She was so busy reading your post. That's where it was a week. And, and it's left her all flustered. And now she can't find her link. <laughs> yeah, because he was talking about taking pictures without shirts and stuff. That, that's yeah. the thing that got me flustered. Yeah, that's it. She got all hot and bothered at the thought of you with the drill with no <laughs> top on. <laughs> okay, so I have it. Here it is. <laughs> the drill part is important, right? <laughs> okay, so I'm super, super excited um, that we actually picked. We were shadowing our um, our newbies last week. We had 10 of them that we were shadowing. And uh, last night or early this morning, we announced the three who are our recruits. So um, Yvonne actually got to be right there in the front because hers came up first. Um, but definitely go and check it out and um, check them out. Yvonne is in Australia and she is pretty amazing. She's the one who last week um, saw a contest for voting on witnesses. She knew nothing about witnesses. She taught herself, found incredible witnesses, and voted on all 30 of them. And we were all kind of nervous that maybe she just kind of like click, 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 click. And we went and she she actually really put thought into it and she had a really nice list. She has since updated that, which is cool because she's not, you can tell she's really kind of, you know, um, really trying her best at Steam It. And this morning she wrote, a really incredible post about how she is living and surviving with um, hepatitis B. And then we have um, Replay It, who is a photographer in Canada. And she is, she does a really, really things with her photos. And um, she is very active as well. So that's kind of neat to see that we have people that are already, you know, posting a lot. And then finally, we have Rachel Bloom. And she is, she's going to be fun to work with because she's got a lot of bubbly energy. She's young. She loves talking about her family and just how she grew up. She was adopted from Russia and um, just a really neat story. So she's been kind of teasing us with little chapters of her story every day. And I think that she's already got the heart for it. And once we give her some, um, just rules and formatting and little tips. I think she's just going to shine. So she is, um, all three of them are our newbies this week. Um, we'll have steam peers assigned to them and we will be helping them. And then our final generous gift. Let me show you really quickly. This Hopefully it will come up. I don't know if, oh, this is the one that was funny, wasn't it? Um, just take off the, take off the Steam It Images 0x0 and just leave the rest oh, of the okay. URL. Oh, okay, there it is. Hold yeah, there you go. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. Pandaris made that for us. And he even had the welcome wagon um, just kind of by itself. So when we come along to blogs and um, we can just, isn't it so pretty? I love how he did the the wood burned Steam It logo. I love when people do creative things with the Steam It logo. And I, I thought that was really creative. So, um, and because he put the little white outline, it looks really great on the dark background. Like here, you're seeing it in um, Discord. And then when you put it in, you know, the white one, you don't see the white at all. It just pops. So it looks great. And we just absolutely love it. So you can definitely give him a little thumbs up, comment, or something if you want. Anyway, that's all from me. The end. Yeah. I love your little DMs. 
the the logo is fantastic and i was super pumped when i saw you share that over in the welcome wagon channel and uh it's been really cool to follow this initiative glad that you've already found some new people to help support and and move along um i know that can i, I say one more thing Ethan? sure um, so just so everybody knows, um, the way that we find them, we're just kind of looking in the introduce yourself and we pick a bunch of people that look, you know, promising, but we are not at all offended. If you have seen someone that you think might tickle our fancy, um, definitely send me a DM or send me, um, a comment or something to point me in the direction. We will add them to our list of shadowing for the week. That's what we do. We shadow for a week and then we pick the three that we really like and we'll pick more as we get more steam here so i just want to let you know if you have anybody that you'd like us to look at please 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 we love recommendations that's all so in case you aren't familiar welcome wagon is an initiative that was started not long ago by well um, excuse me by dream steam and a few other people and they're really trying to do a good job of onboarding people to the platform like like she said they will shadow new users check out what they're doing, try to provide them with information and resources, and bring them into the fold. So it's a great project, one that I personally support. Last week, I surprised Dream Steam with a delegation, and um, that went over well. <laughs> and this week, I may or may not have another surprise that comes in the form of how I'm supporting that project. Um, my account is now trailing Welcome Wagon at 10%. So anything your account votes on, my account will also vote on. So it's always a really good way to support things like that and with, with my account. And so I completely trust the votes that you'll be placing with that group account. So um, like I trail the steam engine, I am trailing the welcome wagon now. So it's great to be able to support that. And, and you know, it's good that for the new users just to see some other people vote. And that could lead them to great communities that I'm connected with as well. So it's some good exposure for everybody. And maybe we'll get some of the people in this show someday, eventually. So anyway, Dream Steam, thank you so much for uh, not screaming today and uh, for sharing that with us. And I hope that you'll take the time to go check out the Welcome Wagon Initiative and see what they've been up to because they are definitely worthy of your support. Can you imagine in a month or two, we actually have those people here and they talk, yeah, well, I started steaming two or three months ago and this lovely lady, Dream Steam and her Welcome Wagon, <laughs> welcome to, welcome to us to stream it. And now we're here. It would be so lovely to see here. Yeah, it would be really great, R really great thing to see. And yeah, so thank you once again. Now, I do want to take a moment to congratulate the winners of the giveaway. Uh, today, I will be handing out some 50% votes to Andy Santix, Dream Steam, Crazy BG, Artemis North, and Activist Blog. So congratulations to the five of you for winning today. If you have a preferred post that you'd like me to cast the vote on, just send it to me in a direct message. And I'll take care of that as soon as I can, sometime after the show is over. All right, so Petra, just to let me know how we are on time, how many more people do we have in the queue right now? Well, we have Sargento, and uh, for now, just Sargento, but we still have your post. Mine? My post? Yeah, your post. Oh, and Shadows Club just joined in, so two, three people for now. Yeah, well, Four. I I personally don't have anything to share Four. this week. I um have gotten behind, but I do have something. I am just I'll... sorry to say, but I have just checked your uh, blog, and there is a post that you have written six days ago about talk of the line, and since you are always so lovely to all of us and arranging giveaways and stuff, I think it's only fair to put your post in and get upload from all the people that are here, right, guys? Well, um, absolutely. Crickets. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Um, but I think that and I'll definitely share the link, but we'll let, we'll let Sarge go ahead and present and then we'll talk about this. I'll, I will make mention of it in just a moment. So, 
Okay, Sarge, go ahead, Yeah. Oh, no picture. Hang on, I'll fix that real quick. Oh boy, this is, a, on it. this is bad karaoke. This is going to be good. It's great to have Sarge here as a full member this week. In the past few weeks when he has been participating, he has not been. So it's great to have him as a passenger now on the steam engine. So got to check you folks out before I join up. Hey, I joined you before I joined that alliance. I still ain't a member of them. I'm still checking up on them. But anyway, uh, to get to the post so you can get to your stuff, uh, this, uh, a little self-aggrandizing here, but really what I'm really trying to promote is this bad karaoke contest because there's not a lot of participation. Uh, it's a shame. Dynamic, uh, dynamic, uh, what is it? Dynamic Steamians. They're going to get involved. Uh, dynamic Green TK. He's going to get involved with Snook in this. But it's a lot of fun. Watch this just to have a laugh because, you know, uh, but I think I have a link in there to the original contest itself. If you could get that out because Sim Girl and Snook Rick work really, really hard on this. And it's just something to have fun, you know. And I mean, shoot, we act a fool here on Discord. Why not? And you don't have to show your face. My army buddy in the now, he does it every time. And you never see his face. He just has a video of a window with him singing in the background. So just have a good time and, you know, go over there, look at it. I mean, what you got to lose? You can go hide in the kitchen and sing. It's bad karaoke, whether you sing good, bad, whatever. It's good stuff. Thank you, Sarge. I think this has been one of the most fun initiatives that anyone has come up with because it really can be anyone. You don't have to be able to sing. You don't have to be able to do, you know, you don't have to have any abilities. You can just enter. It's it's great. It's bad karaoke. So give it a shot. And uh, thank you, Sarge, for sharing that with us. And I hope that you'll all go check out that post and read the original contest and read about it and and check it out. You got till the 23rd, uh, Dream Steam, I believe, because she does it on a two week thing. It's not a week. The, each contest is two weeks. I believe it's May 23rd. What's today? Today's the 22nd. You better get that song out there, Dream Steam girl. Get on it. <laughs> Come up with something creative to film while you sing so just like you know like he said his army buddy just filmed a window you should film like some really funny inanimate object that would add a lot of production value to your video funniest thing i ever saw was a gal had little squirrel puppets and she was singing with little <laughs> squirrel puppets going around they were cute that does sound like a good plan oh that was you dream steam <laughs> Oh, okay, so an owl. All right, well, that that's pretty great. Well, anyway, if you're looking for contest to enter, there you go. You heard it here. Bad karaoke. Thank you so much, Sarge. Yeah, All right. Um, moving on, uh, Shadow's Pub is next, so the floor is yours. So as most of you, if not all of you, probably know, we had a witness chat in the Steam at Ramble last uh, Saturday. It was attended by 16 witnesses, which represented 13 witness accounts, because three of them are in partnership. And it was a it was an interesting chat. We had two there from the top 20 witnesses. Agro showed up. Tim Cliff was there. Uh, if he'd got to the meetup in Tennessee soon enough, Luke Stokes could have taken part, but he was a little bit on the late side. And speaking of Tennessee, we had 18 Steamians listening in all in one place, which was really kind of cool. And I believe there was four witnesses that were there. So the post that I put up is, I did put it up, didn't I? Yeah. The post that I put up is the, um, the write-up and the recording. So enjoy. Yeah, so for those of you who are unfamiliar, this came up about a couple months ago we were in. So Shadows Pub hosts a curation segment very similar to this show 
on Thursdays called Pimp Your Post Thursday, where everybody gets on and talks about what they've been up to. And so these di- discussions would often devolve into issues surrounding witnesses and their importance, their roles, the things they do, the things they shouldn't do, whatever. So we'd often talk about those in PYPT. So now Shadows Pub does a pretty regular witness chat where they get together and just have a chat with as many witnesses as they can find. So it was really good to hear that you had a couple of top 20. I was not able to attend on Saturday because I was busy, but it I will definitely go check out this recap. It's really great. So if you're unfamiliar with witnesses or want to hear from some and where what want to know or get a better idea of who you should cast your votes for, definitely go check out this. And um, Shadows, when's the next one? June 16th. Okay, so June 16th. And- you also want to keep in mind that uh, Agro does a witness forum that's more top 20 oriented, but it's in the MSP on the fourth Sunday or the fourth Saturday of the, of the month. So that's this coming Saturday. There's one in, in MSP as well. Okay. So that's good to know. Any one that, you know, you have to, if you're interested, check that out. And so also Shadows, if you just want to go ahead and plug PYPT for this week, remind everyone what time that is. It's Pimp Your Post Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 3 p.m. UTC, and again at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is 11 UTC. And then there's the after chat after both of them, which sometimes lasts the whole duration. And that, once again, is over on the Steam at Ramble, and I've just dropped a link to that in the chat if you'd like to join. So, yeah, no problem. Thank you so much, Shadows Pub. It's always a pleasure to have you here. and. It's we kind of take our inspiration on this show from Pimp Your Post Thursday, so it's a great segment to attend. I'm we'll probably make an appearance there this week. I had to miss last week, but um, anyway, that's that's great. So thanks, uh, Petra. What's yeah, up? Yeah, um, Pimp Your Post was actually the first time I spoke on Steam it and left my voice out, so I'm forever grateful to Shadows Pub for making all that happen and all that possible. I think it might have been the first time I ever spoke on voice as well after I got involved on Steemit, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. I think she's the first... First show is um, sort of the first great thing people do on Steemit. (laughs) It was, yeah. I, I know that they've had shows on MSP for a very long time, but this is, like, for this format, uh, PYPT was one of the earliest and I think it was a great idea that still has stood the test of time and the test of time being like what six months <laughs> it's so Actually, strange somebody told me the other day or I think it was in an interview I was on that it was eight months it was the first eight. week of October of 2017 well that that would make sense because I I started really my main activity started in July of last year so that would have been about the time that yeah, that makes sense. Wow, I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, wow. yeah I was a little surprised too. Okay, um, next up we have the Sarah Gabriel. Are you ready for? And do you have your post to share with us? There you go. Hello. Uh, this is just a quick update. So it's mostly some pictures that I threw together and a little bit of text to explain the fact that I'm probably going to be mostly absent for the next two weeks. Um, I'm moving to Illinois for the summer and then permanently in August, but I start my um, first independent study project um, for my PhD this summer. Um, So I'm in the process of packing up my apartment and um, getting my luggage together and uh, I kept thinking that I was going to make some post about something all last week and it totally didn't happen. So, uh, I've sort of officially been like, okay, here's, here's a post about the fact that I'm not posting. (laughs) Well, I certainly hope that you'll be able to continue attending this show because it's been great. It's been great to hear from you every week. So I hope that That'll work out. I hope so. I have to figure out the time change. Oh, uh, yes. But I'll be actually closer to your uh That's your true. Time. Yeah, so it's it'll be 5 p.m. for you, I think, if that's central. So I don't know if that'll work out or not, but... 
And congratulations on your PhD. That's a major thing to accomplish. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. What's the focus of your degree? I'm uh, so I'm doing history, um, history, labor history, hopefully focusing on uh, race, gender and class and how they intersect in um, organizing and labor unions and things like that. OK. I'm always interested just because I know that because uh, I'm presently in a, a um, an engineering PhD field. And I know that it's always interesting when you when someone says they have a PhD, you're like, oh, wow. But then you're like, oh, wait, they're just focusing on one very, very, very specific thing. So it's always interesting to see what people choose. So thanks. Yeah. OK, well. Petra. Oh, yeah, we have more people. So next up is Andy Santix. We are ready for you. Coming to us all the way from tomorrow morning, it's Andy, Andy Santix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so ahead of you guys. I'm going to get sick of that joke. <laughs> You're going to um, the this, future. I am. I am. This is just a little, um, I wrote a, a poem for a buddy up topic weeks ago and I didn't post it because I wasn't really all that happy with it and it was just not enough. So I thought what I'd do was sit down on my front porch and try and draw a picture of the scenery that I see to go with the poem, which was called what I see through my window. And um, before this, I have never drawn a stick figure in my life, never drawn anything at all. So it was quite a big ask. Um, and uh, this is the end result. So that picture was like the first draft and then I just added to it and, um, and it sort of gets, I don't know whether it gets better or worse, <laughs> the more I fiddled with it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, uh, it was fun to do. And, and since I've learned a little bit, I'm actually really enjoying drawing. So I'm going to carry on and do a bit more. Well, thanks once again for sharing those with us. It's always a pleasure to hear from you, and I'm sure that everyone will enjoy checking that out. Oh, thank you for having me. And I will try not to make too many more jokes about the fact that you're so far ahead of most of us. Oh, I don't mind. It's all good. I'm so far ahead of you. It's not funny. And the picture looks pretty great. Dreams team wants me to draw an, a flower. <laughs> Goodness knows what it would come out like. <laughs> Next week on Talk of the Line, you can see Andy Santic's flower <laughs> for Dream Scene. Maybe. Watercolor, please. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you don't want much, lady. Because her like her ancestor is like this amazing painter. You would not believe what he was painting. And and like I'm thinking if she just started to sketch and this was her first sketch, I bet you she just has to like try different mediums and she's going to be amazing. So I've challenged her to make me a watercolor flower and I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, my my great, 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 however many greats it is, grandfather is, uh, um, one of the most famous New Zealand painters of all time. Um, and there you go. <laughs> um, I don't think I've got even a, a tenth of his, well, a fraction of his talent. Um, but uh, it's nice to, to look at what he's done and, you know, imagine that maybe one day. Definitely. That's pretty neat. Thank you for sharing those with us, Cal, ma'am. Yeah, those pictures are amazing. Wow, they look so nice. All right, so it looks like we've got about 10 minutes to go. And uh, have we reached the end of the queue there, Petra? Well, can I share something? Of course. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so all you people in here... Go and upvote this now. Thank you.
So I will say w- one order. thing that that is the recap from last week's show. And if you are, if you need at least some reason to go see it, the, the first and only documented time that I know of that Cat Weasel has come on voice occurs in the, that show. So you can go check it out if you want to hear what Cat Weasel sounds like. So there you go. Then you Actually, have to... Cat Weasel was on Pimp Your Post Thursday last week. Okay, I was wondering if he. Started. I was wondering got if he started. was going to. So that's really good news. Uh, <laughs> I figured you would be pleasantly one, surprised by that, Shadows. One down, one to go. <laughs> Being enchanted now. And you have to believe Cat Weasel. I mean, he's a doctor after all. Right, Jeff, of course. You're a doctor, huh? That is the best signature line I have ever seen. Thank you so much, Petra. What is for it sharing. that he's turning in that little cartoon? What is it that he has his hand on? Do you really want to know? Okay, never mind. <laughs> I actually, I actually don't actually want to know. <laughs> no. So, anyway, all right. Well, thank you, Petra, for sharing that. Another recap will yeah, be up t- probably tomorrow about this show. And you can also look forward to the next edition of the Steam Engine Express. Episode 22 should be out sometime this week. So that's what I've got going on. But it is about eight minutes to go, which means it's time for my monologue where I talk for five minutes to end the show and nobody else oh, gets a word oh, in. Oh, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I just wanted to ask, uh, can I share something else really quick? Of course. Eight minutes. Come on. We will not listen to you ramble on for eight minutes. We will listen to me ramble on for eight minutes. (laughs) No, okay. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys that I started selling my toys and jewelry and shipping them worldwide. So whenever, wherever you are, my brother, my brother can get to you and check out the post and see what it's all about and order your toy or a necklace. It's all made of felt. Uh, it's made out of re- that felt is made out of recycled plastic bottles. So it's friendly for vegans, vegetarians, and all you lovely people who are uh, caring about our environment. And also, if you don't like my ideas you can send me one of your ideas so i can make whatever cartoon toy um, avatar or something that you would like and i do accept steam or sbd so there you go check out the post and help me uh cover the entire world with my products (laughs) i'm so happy to i have to um well tell you a little mm, secret Kind of, uh, I started shipping and I've started selling and accepting Steam and I've already started uh, receiving orders. So I shipped some of my products to, oh, there he is, <laughs> going to Netherlands, Netherlands and uh, some of them will go to Africa and I'm so happy. Yay. And thank you, Benji, for being my first Steamy customer. I'm getting this for free, right? Um, that depends if your shirt will be on or off. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> uh, no, 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 back to your shirt now. Shirt is going to cost you about 20 of these. Oh, dear me. <laughs> Maybe I should have gone on that monologue. Okay, well, thank you, Petra. I'm actually going to go check that out because the things that you make are, are pretty neat. So that's great that you're able to sell them and ship them across the world now. That's fantastic. Yeah, so you go ahead and do a little monologue now and leave me uh, half a minute for mine. (laughs) Of course. Well, so my monologue today is not really about anything that we've talked about so far. It's not about Steam It. It's about something really neat that I've got going on this weekend. So for those of you who are not aware, I am in a band. About two years ago, a few of the graduate students in my department and I got together and decided to start a band because it was fun so i i'm the bass guitar player and i do vocals occasionally you can check out our band's performances on uh, my personal youtube channel which i'm sure crazy bg would be happy to provide the link for (laughs) but anyway um i 
I'm going to find it right now. All right, thank you. Giddy up, giddy up. So, I'm surprised you have it ready. Why do you have it ready? <laughs> so, uh, thankfully, the 5.30 is kind of a soft deadline. It's not a hard thing or anything. But this weekend, so um, a member of our department, our graduate department, is getting married this weekend and asked our band if we would do, if we would play. And so, typically... It's not that big of a deal. We've played a few gigs over the past month, so it's been fine. But this has involved more of us actually producing the wedding. So not only are we playing at the reception, but our strings member members are actually going to be playing during the ceremony. So we are we found a couple of other members of our department who play the violin. We already have a cellist, and they're going to be playing during the ceremony. And then we'll be providing the entertainment for the rest of the evening. So not only has it been a really interesting experience because I've never done it from a band perspective, but it's also been a very interesting multicultural experience because the people who are getting married are from China. So there's a whole lot of Chinese culture involved with this. And so we've actually learned a song that our lead singer will be singing in Chinese. And it has been quite an experience for sure. So... um, I am very much looking forward to it, and we've got a lot of practicing to do, but we have a lot of things going on, and I hope that I'll be able to show you some pictures and videos from that event this weekend. And so if you are interested, then you can go check out um, the video playlist on my YouTube channel from some of our band stuff, and apparently there are t-shirts now, (laughs) so... (laughs) Thank you, Crazy BG, so much. So I just wanted to update you guys because I think it's a lot of fun to to kind of share with you what's going on outside of Steam It. And I haven't had a whole lot of time to blog about personal things, but um, that's kind of what's going on, and it's it's a lot of fun. So wedding this weekend for our band, really exciting. And now I am done with that, so I'm going to let Petra finish with her closing statement for the day and then I will sign us off and we'll call it a day so that I can go play basketball. <laughs> okay. I, I'm Petra. I have some necklaces and I love Juro. That's it, guys. Goodbye. That does not sound like me. <laughs> that sounded like Bora. <laughs> Then, come on, that does not sound like me at all. <laughs> Man, I just wanted to say that it's been such a lovely evening, evening and it was a pleasure to listen to all of you guys and see your amazing work. Uh, keep doing the great job that you are and staying true to yourself. Thank you for being with us and until the next time. Keep that smile on. Oh, oh, and I think all the blonde terrorist ladies that came to Croatia um, and they're keeping awake and busy will be gone by the next week. So he will be your co-host next time. I will give you a chance to respond to that, Awaken. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like it being the sideline and just wait for the right punchline. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to think about this one. All right. Well, with that, I just personally want to thank everyone who presented today and who listened. Thank you so much. A big shout out again to Sir Cork and Ron Decay, their witness efforts, and the Steam Star Radio Network, as well as the UR Hope blockchain charity. Thank you to you guys for all you do and for allowing us to have this time slot each and every week. This, once again, has been Talk of the Line, a weekly voice chat curation segment brought to you by the Steam Engine Group on Steamit.com, broadcast live across many platforms on the Steam Star Radio Network. I am Ethan D. Smith. I have been here with my co-host, Petra. It's been a great time sharing all of this with you this evening. You can look for the recap post over the next couple of days. Tune in tomorrow for the next episode of the Steam Engine Express. And finally... If you want to continue the fun, tune in to Pimp Your Post Thursday, this Thursday at 3 p.m. UTC, 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, over on the Steam It Ramble with Shadows Pub as your host. Once again, I am Ethan D. Smith. My co-host is Petra. We will say goodbye until next time, same time, same place next week, 8 p.m. UTC, 
right here in the Steam Engine Discord or on the Steam Star Radio Network. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.